Again, good morning and welcome to Ivy Learn Content Partner Webinar. Today we're integrating Pearson products into Ivy Learn. Joining us, we have two guest presenters from Pearson. We have both Shaylon, who is going to be facilitating the question box and giving a quick introduction. And we also have Robert Thomas, who is also going to be doing our main presentation today. We thank them for joining us today and at this time, um, Shaylon, would you like to say a few words? Hi, everyone. Yes, I would. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I'm Shalyn Anderson, and I'm one of the many local Pearson Education representatives based here in Indiana. Thank you for joining the webinar to walk through best practices when implementing Pearson MyLab Mastering in Canvas using standard integration. The focus of today's webinar will be on Pearson's standard integration with Canvas. This is the type of Pearson integration that the majority of adoptions here at Ivy Tech will use. However, I do want to point out that the courses using the Ivy Tech Follett Include Ed program will use a different type of integration with slightly different functionality and different setup. So I just want to point the difference out. Um, today we're going to be going over standard integration. So it's going to be a little bit um, different than the Include Ed courses. So today, with standard integration, we're going to show the course pairing process. We'll also show how the grade sync functions, and we'll show how to build content using the external learning tool. We will also point out important things to consider if you're developing a Canvas course that will be shared with others. We will wrap up today's session with question and answers. Rob will be leading our demonstration today. Rob is our go-to integrations implementation engineer, and he works with a variety of Pearson products, and he also works with both Blackboard and Canvas. So with that, I'll go ahead and um, let Rob take over um, the presenter role, and we'll go ahead and dive in. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Rob, you should have access now to be the presenter. Fantastic. Can you see my screen at this point? Yes, we can. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you, Shalyn, for that excellent introduction, and hello, everyone. As uh, Shalyn mentioned, I work for Pearson Education as an implementation engineer for our integrations with standard integration into uh, learning management systems such as Ivy Learn. So I wanted to talk quickly through the process of that course level integration. Um, some of the best practices and some of the pitfalls that we would recommend avoiding if you're creating a course that's going to be copied multiple times or for many different users. Our integration with um, Canvas and with Ivy Learn is a TPI-based integration, and what that means is it's, we send information back and forth. It's not necessarily a building block uh, like Blackboard has. When you're in an Ivy Learn course and you're ready to begin the integration process with a Pearson MyLab or Mastering Product course, the first step in that course will be to go to Settings. And from Settings to the Navigation tab up at the top of this page. And you'll want to make sure that the MyLab and Mastering tool, or app rather, is enabled. So I'll use this gear box in the drop-down menu, and I will click Enable. And I can see that that's now shown in the course navigation for the course. I'll click Save at the bottom of this page. And that has, on my left menu of my Ivy Learn course, added MyLab and Mastering. This MyLab and Mastering tool will be your and your students' hub for inter or navigating through the Pearson material. Right now, there's no course paired with this one, and so this is an empty app. To begin pairing a course, we'll click Select a MyLab and Mastering product to use with this course. That will take us into the Pearson MyLab and Mastering system. If you've used uh, this system before or with Blackboard, you can use the same username and password. All of the previous MyLab or Mastering courses that were paired with Blackboard will be available if I click 
and I'll go back to that page, if I click select from my existing course list, it, this is especially useful if you're creating a course or copying a course that you've previously used. When you deliver this to instructors and you deliver their course to them, you will use course IDs for standard integration, which will be typically the creating instructor's last name followed by five randomized digits. That course ID will be used by instructors to make an exact copy of a specific course. In this example, I'll click select from my existing course list, and I'll choose one of the previous courses that was used. In this case, I'll choose a managerial accounting text. Clicking select next to that text shows me uh, the information. This one, we have a new edition, and so the first option that we'll, you'll see if you're staying with an older edition, you'll click select current edition. You, in developing the course, can also select new edition to upgrade your course and your assignments to a new edition of the course. I'll give the course a title. That'll let me distinguish that if I'm teaching multiple sections of the same course. I can choose whether or not I want to allow instructors to copy this course. So if I'm setting this course up as a template or a master course, I'll want to make sure that I allow copy so that other instructors can copy this into their account. And then I'll set up my course dates. We recommend for integrated courses that the start date always be the date that you're creating the course. That way you can immediately test student links and assignments and you can make sure that that navigation will operate the way that you expect it to. We recommend that the course end date be at least a week or so after the final exam. You're able to extend that out up to two years from the course creation date. This will determine at what point the students have or do not have access to the MyLab course materials. I'll go ahead and click Create Course at the bottom. And that begins creating my course. I will receive a reference number with that course. That reference number can be used by Pearson's technical support to look up a course in the case that the course fails to create. Uh, this happens very, very rarely, and usually during peak times we may have a few courses that fail to create, and we can look those up in the system using these reference numbers. There's a note here that says new courses may take up to three hours to create, and that's, again, during our highest volume times. It may take three hours. Usually these courses are created within five to ten minutes. And that's all I need to do in order to create my integrated my lab course and begin that process that'll be creating on the Pearson ed as we continue our conversation immediately when I refresh the my lab and mastering app within my Ivy learn course I see that I have now the links for that course so I see my accounting lab student links on the left hand side of this tool and I see my instructor links on the right hand side of this tool this tool also includes support tools where I have help and documentation for students and instructors and the ability for students and instructors to contact Pearson Technical Support immediately. If I click on this, it will launch me to our support website from which students or instructors can call in or begin a live chat with one of our tech support agents. If there are technical issues or you do need to contact tech support for any reason, we've also included um, this Pearson MyLab and Mastering app, a Diagnostics tab. And that Diagnostics tab includes all of the information that our Pearson technical support team would need in order to locate your, your course or your account and resolve any issues that you have. If, for whatever reason, you've paired a course with your Ivy Learn course, a Pearson course with your Ivy Learn course that you do not want to continue using, or you want to pair a different course or a different edition with that same course, the Diagnostics page is also where you have the ability to delete Canvas to MyLab and Mastering Course Pairing. We recommend that this only happen if students are not actively enrolled in the course, as it will delete the course on the Pearson end and all student results.
I'll go ahead and click on My Accounting Lab Course Home, one of the student links, to check whether or not that has created for me. By clicking on that, I've now launched into the My Accounting Lab course. So this has created, and that signs me on directly into the course. As an instructor, I have access to the instructor tools, and the students would have access to everything from the left-hand menu that has not been shown to students. So as you customize your My Lab or Mastering courses, you're able to determine what students will or will not have access to. The next step is grade sync. And so before I move into grade sync, uh, Shailen, do we have any questions um, at this time about anything we've covered so far? Hi, Rob. We do. Um, we have somebody who is asking the question about repeating the process when you were in the setting and navigation to be able to connect with Pearson. Absolutely. So I clicked on settings in my Ivy Learn course the navigation tab up at the top, that lists all of the apps available for your course. And from my lab and mastering, I used the drop-down menu and I enabled that particular application. At the end of that process, I clicked Save. That was all I needed to do in order to bring my lab and mastering uh, to become visible and available within the course. The grade sync is the process by which assignments from the MyLab or Mastering product are pulled into the Ivy Learn course. So I do have, when I click on grade sync, so tools, diagnostics, grade sync, when I click on grade sync at the top, I'm shown all of the assignments that exist within the course. I can sort these alphanumerically, so I have item one, chapter one, and then the other chapters included. I can sort them down as well, so I'm seeing just the sessions included here. I can select individual assignments if I wanted to, or I can select all of the assignments from the course. And when I click Sync Grades, that will update all of the grades or pull over all of the assignments that I've included in this course. If there are assignments in the MyLab and Mastering product that you don't want students to be accountable for, or you've created as optional assignments, we would recommend not performing a grade sync. So the My Accounting Lab orientation activity, I may want to uncheck that particular activity and not sync that one to my Ivy Learn course. When I click Sync Grades, that will begin the grade sync process, which will pull over the raw scores of all of those assignments. So in the same way that our Blackboard integration pulls the raw scores as determined within the MyLab and Mastering product, so also will the Ivy Learn course pull in the raw scores. I can see success here in green on the right-hand side, and it will list all of the assignments as it completes them so that I know where the grade sync process is. I'll go ahead and move now to the assignments page, which is currently hidden in this particular course, but the assignments page is where those grade synced items will be placed. Our grade sync will place assignments into the first open group. Ivy Learn uses groups to organize us different assignments that are given to the students. When I create a new group, we recommend that you have whatever your MyLab and Mastering product group will be as the first open group. So if I have assignments here, but I wanted it and I'd created these assignments offline or they're delivered outside of the Pearson MyLab and Mastering product, I can create a new group and call this MyLab and Mastering. I'll go ahead and click Save. And that group I'm able to move so I'll minimize all of these, and I'll move the MyLab to the top. Now, any assignments that I sync will be placed into MyLab. We recommend creating that assignment group and placing it before completing a grade sync. I'll go back to MyLab and Mastering. I'll go back to Grade Sync. And now, I'll sync that orientation activity that we didn't sync the first time. When I click Sync Grades, I see In Progress again. 
and I see that my accounting lab orientation activity has been added. When I navigate back to assignments in my Ivy Learn course, I see that that was added into the new MyLab group that I had created. If the assignment already exists and a grade sync is performed, it will only update that assignment. It'll update due dates, point values for that assignment. It will not update or it will not create a second assignment for them. I'm able to change these assignments once they're added in. If I want these to be a different title, I can also change the title of these assignments in the MyLab or Mastering product, and that will pull over as whatever the title was in the MyLab and Mastering product when I complete a grade sync. So if I don't want these organized by chapter, but I want them instead to say week or module, I'm able to make those changes in the MyLab, and they'll pull into the Ivy Learn course. When I click on grades within the Ivy Learn course, I'll see those same assignments and assignment groups that I had created. So I see all of the assignments that are, were created within the assignments page. And if I scroll all the way to the right, I can see the groups of assignments and all of the points the students would have earned in those various assignment groups. Unlike our integration with Blackboard, for at least this summer term, we are not going to have automatic grade sync for Ivy Learn courses. So the grade sync will need to be completed anytime you want to pull those grades from MyLab to Ivy Learn. The grade sync can be done at any time by the instructors there, whenever you want to update or report those scores. If I select everything and I click Sync Grades, it will refresh whatever is included in the MyLab or Mastering Gradebook. So you can update those at any time. It is not an automatic update, which is a difference from our Blackboard integration. In the future, we will have automatic grade sync for Ivy Learn, but it is not presently available. This is all of the basics of our uh, standard integration, you're able to include those synced assignments into modules. And I would talk next about when you're creating courses that are going to be copied out and used by multiple instructors. We recommend, because the grade sync does create assignments that link directly to a specific course, we recommend that the assignments not be grade synced before course copy and that grade sync happens after the course copy has been completed. So certainly, in order to test this, you are welcome to add these assignments in and make sure that your course is set up and behaving and weighted the way that you want it to be. But we do recommend for the MyLab assignments that this be an empty course group so that when this course is copied to a new instructor and they perform grade sync for the first time, it will populate those assignments. You are able to add into modules links to all of the MyLab and Mastering default spaces. So instead of assignment specific links and presentations, we would recommend adding in the My Accounting Lab course home or all assignments pieces into specific modules. I'll demonstrate that now. So I've clicked on modules within my Ivy Learn course, and I'm in module one. I can see that I've already added a My Accounting Lab All Assignments link to module one. But in module two, I don't have such a link. I'll go ahead and add one now. From module two, I'll click on this plus, which is all the way over on the right hand side, and that will add to the existing module. I can add in either assignments if they've already been grade synced, or I'll click on external tool. And the external tool will show me all of the MyLab tools available. So I can link to the My Accounting Lab study plan, results, quizzes and tests, Pearson eText, multimedia library, homework, course home, or all assignments. In this case, I'll go ahead and click on course home. That gives me the link to directly to that course home for this course. I'll go ahead and add that item in. And now I've created a link that students can use to launch the My Accounting Lab course home 
and the My Accounting Lab All Assignments. This behaves the same way as if, this, if the student clicks on My Lab and Mastering and then clicks on that particular link. I'll click on Course Home and that will launch me into the My Accounting Lab Course Home. One benefit of adding this in the module space is that that Course Home will launch within the Canvas platform. So I'll go ahead and do that again. Modules. My Accounting Lab Course Home. And that opens my assignments page. I apologize that the course home did not launch in that page. I will investigate that and, and confirm why that did not take place. But it should open up here within the Ivy Learn course. So adding those to the modules gives us the extra benefit of directing to specific pages from the MyLab without having to launch the MyLab in a separate window if that's not desired. I can see now all of the assignments that are open to me as a student from the All Assignments page without having those assignments be grade synced at the moment. Shailen, do we have any questions about setting up those modules and the grade sync process? Hi, Ross. Yes, we do. Um, we have the first question um, has to do with the grade sync and um, upon multiple grade syncs, it's sort of scrambled. Um, it looks like her grade column. Do you know what might be happening in that situation? In a Canvas or Ivy Learn grade sync, those grade columns are intended to match the assignments. So if on your assignments page um, it's displayed, it's displayed, so chapter one here is beneath chapter 10, you're able to move those around and that will reorganize your grade columns. So the, the Ivy Learn grade book will match the assignments set up. Um, in the grade sync itself, so the list of assignments, the order may be scrambled and that's why we've given the item name alphanumeric sort in order to make uh, sense out of those displays. Did that answer that question? I will let you know. I believe so, okay. but I will, I will let you know. Um, and then another question that came in was wondering if administrators can pair courses on behalf of instructors. Yes, administrators can pair courses on behalf of instructors. In that case, when the instructor first accesses the MyLab and Mastery tool, they will be asked for an access code. Um, that access code would provide section instructor access to that course. So it can be done and it does work. Uh, we would need to make sure that we've provided then all teaching instructors in that case, Shalom and I can provide those section instructor access codes so that the course recognizes they are a second instructor in the course. The uh, account that creates it is by default an instructor in the course. Okay. And, okay, um, it doesn't look like we answered the question okay. um, about the order of the assignments. So she says, the order that the assignments appear in the sync area is the way that they'll come over into the grade book. And then she's questioning that, so like a question mark. Yes, so into the assignments portion of the course, this grade sync is pulling from what we call a history ID, which is uh, on the Pearson back end, and that does not necessarily relate to when the assignment was created or the assignment's name. So this is, if I sort this, this is uh, the order that those assignments would appear in. So if I click on the item names, it will begin grade sync with an individual item. So we can watch and pull those over. If I click Sync Grades, I can see on the right-hand side that it is starting with the very first activity and it is moving through 
those activities. It may not come over in the order that we expect it to. So I see chapter 14 and 11 and 12 before I see chapter 2, 3, and 4. That is um, pulling from the back end of the system. It is not pulling from anything that we have control over in the title of the assignments. So when we sync those to the assignments space, there may be some reordering that may be required in order to pull those over. So I see chapter 10, chapter 11, chapter 12, 14, and I can move again chapter 1, and I can create an order out of these assignments that I want to. I can also sync uh, items individually if I want to uh, create that order, or I can sync chapters individually. I don't have to sync the whole course at once if that was a concern. Okay. We will, we will work with the individual instructor to make sure that we have a, a firm resolution on that. So we can go ahead Absolutely. and move forward. Those are all of the things that I wanted to make sure that I had shared with you about setting up our integration, about creating that uh, the space for the grade sync, about the behavior of the grade sync, and about diagnostics and contacting our technical support. You, of course, are able to do a lot of different things within the modules space to create different pages and modules and link to specific assignments or pull in uh, as I said, the My Accounting Lab or the Mastering Product um, links to those particular assets of the course. So at this time, I would like to open it up to any questions that you have, um, but that, that concludes all of the planned presentation. Hi, this is Kathy. Um, I just want to add here, both Gwen and Kenneth um, are questioning, you know, how you reorder your grade center column. And uh, one of our other participants pointed out a good, a good point, that when you're in the Ivy Learn Grade Center, you can organize your grade center by due date. So it doesn't necessarily have to follow um, the way that I, that Pearson has laid out their chapters, um, you know, in order. You can actually have that ordered by due date, and the Ivy Learn platform will automatically do that for you. That is correct. Absolutely, you can have that display for you by due date or by assignment group. And I want to thank Nikki was actually one of our participants who pointed that out. So thank you for that. And it looks like we have another question that just came in. Um, Rob, would you please go over including several MyLab activities in a module? For instance, if you want students to do two activities in the MyLab within one module, do you need to include both? in the module? Absolutely. If, if you're creating a course and you're linking those specific uh, activities to a module, you absolutely can include those. So in this case, I'll go with module three and say, but if I add assignment, so instead of external tool, which will take me into the MyLab, I'm adding particular assignments. And I'll add in the chapter two homework. I will have to add them one at a time to a module. But I can add in the Chapter 2 warm-up, the Chapter 2 homework, and the Chapter 2 dynamic study module. I can add all three of those to a particular module for students. They will then be able to click on that particular assignment in our business courses and our math courses. You're able to click on the assignment and launch directly into that assignment. Otherwise, it will take them to the assignments page if this particular capacity isn't available. And that page is the one that lists all of the assignments.
And Rob, it looks like we have another question. Um, can the grades only be synced by points, or can they also be synced using percentages? They can only be pulled over with a point value as um, x out of whatever the total point value is. You are, of course, able to, in the MyLab and Mastering product, change the point values um, to equal 100 if you wanted it to display uh, easier for uh, calculation or students' calculation of their own grade. You can change the point values to be uh, whatever you wish them to be. In the example that I'm showing right now, I can see that each question is uh, has been changed. So I have one question that is worth five points, one question that is worth 10 points, and it is out of 30 total. So this assignment will pull over as a score out of 30. I can increase that to be uh, 100 using the question values within my my lab or mastering product. So you can change that up to 100, um, but it will not by default sync over just their percentages. You can have the Ivy Learn gradebook display as percentages, but the scores that's creating that percentage will be a number out of a total score. Okay, and another question just came in. Um, can we please go over inserting just the page in a module? Yes. So one of the things in Ivy Learn is you have a pages tab that you can create uh, specific pages on. And in modules, I'm able to, let me jump down to module four, I'm able to add in, instead of assignment, I can add in a content page, and I can either create a new page or a page that has been created within the course. So if I say new page, I can call this demo. I'll add that item in, and then with demo, I'm able to edit that particular page. I'll go ahead and click on the demo page. That takes me into pages into demo, at which point I can begin to change what is included on the demo page. I have an HTML editor and I have the ability to copy, paste, or type into the online editing space. This is a function of Ivy Learn and is separate from the Pearson integration. Bob, and I just have to clarify here, um, the person is asking, instead of this goes with the, the inserting just the page in a module, and to clarify, she's saying instead of showing three activities in one module, just show the MyLab homepage or the MyLab list of assignments. Yes, yes. So I will move back over to modules. And if I didn't want necessarily any particular assignment, I can click module five. I'll click the plus. And instead of assignments, I'll go back to external tool. And I'll choose just to pull in the My Accounting Lab All Assignments, which will give me the list of assignments, homework or quizzes and tests, which in uh, My Accounting Lab will filter whether or not, or the assignment type. So I'll go ahead and click My Accounting Lab All Assignments and add that item. And now in the module, I've added a single page that will direct me to the My Accounting Lab All Assignments page. from which the students could complete uh, those assignments. They don't need the assignments to be added directly into a specific module. The individual assignments to be added directly into a specific module. From here, if I click on Chapter 1 Homework, I can begin work in the Chapter 1 Homework. Okay, and we have another question, which is, are there any best practices or gotchas to keep an eye out for if we're building a course that will be a master course, course, which is then going to be copied out and used by other instructors? Uh, the best practice would be to make sure that when you've created the course and, and you've set this up, that you've also made sure that all of your settings and assignments within the MyLab itself are the way that you want those to be, because that will be copied out to instructors. And so if I click on the My Accounting Lab Assignment Manager or the Gradebook, 
that's a great way for me as an instructor to determine exactly what the settings for that course are. We have three different uh, MyLab product types, and so I'm showing one of them now. The others are mastering, and uh, the other ones will be used in our psychology or uh, our IT groups. But in each of those, you're able to see all of the assignments that are included in the course, and you're able to change the point values for those assignments. So if um, I want these to be worth specific point values, I can edit these assignments. and I'll choose one that I don't have any results for. And so I'm now editing the Chapter 1 homework. I have the option to send grades for this assignment to the Canvas gradebook. I recommend that that not be changed. And then I'm able to edit those particular ones. So I'll go ahead and cancel this and move back. And I'll go to Chapter 4 homework, click Edit, click Go. And this gives me my list of questions. I can see that the first question is right now set to be worth 20 points. The second question is set to be worth 10 points. And I can adjust that if I wanted to, to make it 50 and 50, to create an assignment that had 100 points to answer the previous question as well. If I click Save and Assign, that will uh, allow me to skip straight to the end of that and present that to students. I can also adjust due dates for assignments. Um, and each of our products has an ability to do that where you can set a due date. That due date will uh, be visible in Canvas when you complete a grade sync. So right now there are no due dates in this course and so the assignment list does not display due dates. But I'll go ahead and set a due date for one of those so that I can see what that looks like. So the orientation assignment I'll go to settings for class. I'll give that a due date of the 31st. And then when I click grade sync and I sync the grades for that particular assignment, it will also update the due dates that have been placed within the MyLab for that assignment. So now when I go to assignments, I see the orientation activity is worth 10 points, and it's due March 31st at 11.59 p.m. So that was updated in the grade sync from the MyLab. So I would recommend, uh, as best practices, that the MyLab be uh, set up and all of the settings confirmed to be the behavior that you want those to be before copying those out to instructors. And then the pitfall, um, a pitfall to avoid would be Honestly, making sure that you're using the same Pearson account so that it becomes that you had paired with Blackboard so that all of your previous courses are available to you. If you create a new Pearson account uh, when you pair to Canvas, it will become a little bit more difficult to access the previous courses you may have designed or used. Uh, again, the Pearson courses are housed on the Pearson system, and so whether they're paired with Blackboard or with Ivy Learn is not going to impact your access to them. Rob, is there a way um, to, for instructors to see the student view so that if they're building a course, they can sort of proof the course? Yes, so in our MyLab and Mastering products, we've included uh, the student view. I do not know if Ivy Learn will give you the ability to view a, a true student view in the Ivy Learn behavior, but from the My Accounting Lab course home or any of our My Lab and Mastering course home buttons, that launches the full course as a student, and you're actually able to interact with the My Lab and Mastering product as a student if you click on any of the student visible links. So if I click on Assignments, I will see the student view of those assignments and be able to work through that course as a student and it will remember my score. So the chapter one homework which I opened earlier as a student, if I click see score I can see what my score is and see what that student behavior will be. So we've included in our product line uh, the ability for instructors to see and understand what the student experience is going to be uh, without having to create necessarily a student account 
or be unable to navigate back to the instructor view later on. And we have one question from um, someone who is building a statewide course that others will use. And the question is, should the grades be set? And if they are, would an instructor who receives the copy be able to adjust due date? Yes. Okay, uh, so yes, the instructor will be able to, the instructor will be able to adjust due dates. That's a yes. Um, should the grades be set um, as far as creating uh, the grade area and setting that up and syncing those grades over, I would recommend no, uh, not to keep the synced grades in the course that's being copied, or at least the Ivy Learn course that's being copied. In the MyLab course, yes, make sure that those grades and, and scores and assignments are set up the way that you want them to be. But I would recommend in creating that, that course that we, uh, if you want to, you're able to sync those grades over, make sure that it's going to appear that you want to, that you have your MyLab and Mastering grades as the top open group. And then if you want, if you're able to delete those assignments out before giving this out to those instructors to copy, because the grade sync process does uh, both create an assignment space and uh, tie to that specific course for that specific instructor, uh, the grade sync is how we will want those assignments to be created. So you don't need to create placeholders for those assignments. It'll just need the initial grade sync to create those assignments. Okay, great. And we had um, a person who wanted to clarify uh, with Ivy Learn, the student view is under the settings on the right side of the screen. So I just wanted to share that with the group. Excellent. Excellent. So you are able to view the student view and interact with the course as a student, and it's not giving you the instructor links. So you do have, in Ivy Learn, a student view as well. So that is an excellent uh, tip and, and good to know. <laughs> And we have another question that just came in. Is there a way to see student statistics in the MyLab? Depending on the MyLab and Mastering product, there are different ways to view student statistics and student reports. In my accounting lab, which is what I have paired up and ready to go now, I can talk about how to pull those reports. But whatever system you are using, uh, we do have the ability to see student time on task. Uh, student question performance and student question metrics. So whether or not students are struggling more with a particular question within assignments, all of that is available on every platform. I'll show how to see that within the My Accounting Lab, My Math Lab, our business courses, and our English courses. They all operate on the same platform. Um, in my gradebook, I'm able to navigate to a particular assignment, so I'll say all assignments, and then I will have item analysis that are available for those uh, gradebook items, which will allow me to see exactly what the students have done. So I'll see a student overview, and I see myself, instructional designer. I don't see any other students in here, so I don't have a lot of data to show you, but from my view assignments, I will have the ability to see exactly how students have answered each question, to see individual student answers, or to see class-wide metrics over uh, uh, through an item analysis, which tells me how long students spent on average on a particular question, how many students got that right, how many got it wrong. If it's a homework assignment, I will be able to see um, how many learning aids were opened on average across the course. And I can see that specifically for an individual student as well. I can break that down and see the student spent 45 seconds on this question and 13 seconds on the next question. All of those reports are available as soon as there is data in the gradebook to show for that, or as soon as that data has been created within the course. 
I can also export data out if I wanted to export out specifically an item analysis. I can uh, create a downloadable file. So if I say my accounting lab orientation, I can see my item summary and scores by student or uh, my item summary over. And I'll export that file. That is immediately available for you. So by clicking that, I've opened this up. And again, I don't have any students who are working within this course, so I don't have a lot of options or items available here, but I will see the total points and number of students. Uh, the question ID, there's only one question, the learning objective that question is tied to, and then their score for that. And so I, I can get that breakdown in an exportable report. And again, the click path is a little bit different for our other products, but it is available in every Pearson My11 Mastery product. That level of reporting is that what you were looking for? I believe so. We have a thanks from that user. Okay. <laughs> um, so the next question that I have is we have someone that wants to confirm that the due dates set in the MyLab will update the Canvas calendar. Is that accurate? Yes. So those assignments will be given the due dates that are in the MyLab uh, course but a grade sync will need to be performed in order to update those due dates. So if I am in the MyLab and I change a due date, but I do not um, I do not update that or I do not perform a grade sync after that, the grades will the due date will not automatically update. It will require a grade sync to pull that over. Additionally, if I've set personalized due dates for individual students for either ADA compliance or to give an, a, an extension to them, the class-wide due date is what will appear within the Ivy Learn course and not the individual due date for a particular student. We have a hallelujah. <laughs> I just want to take this opportunity to thank both of our Pearson representatives, uh, Robert Thomas and Shailen Anderson, for being such great uh, presenters today. We do appreciate your time. Um, as we wait for any other additional questions that may come into the question box, um, I'm just going to ask to remind you, if you are developing a statewide course, uh, we want to make sure that you are working with your instructional designer on how to pair those courses when we're using third-party content. We have a special process um, involved in that. We have a special login for how those um, things are taking place. Um, so it's not tied to a specific individual. So make sure that if you are developing a statewide class, that you're working with your instructional designer on that process. On that. Okay. And the one other thing, too, is we want to make sure that you're not um, thinking that grade center yet. Um, you want to make sure that you're using the general links. So again, instructional designer will help you through that process if you're helping to transition those statewide courses. All right. Um, it looks like we do have one other question that came in. Uh, Kenneth wants to know, if you perform a grade sync after the due date, will it still pull the grades over? Yes. It will pull whatever the existing grade is for that assignment at the moment of the grade sync. Great. Thank you so much. Um, we've also had a couple questions. Will this presentation be recorded? Yes, it is being recorded, and it will be on our IV Learn um, training page. So that will be available to you on our IV Learn landing page. I'll try to get that sent out to you. You should be familiar with it um, already, but we'll make sure that that is available to you. It takes anywhere from one to seven days to get that updated on the website. We'll be glad to do that for you. All right. Um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions um, coming in at this time. Again, I just want to thank each and every one of you for participating and being part of our Ivy Learn transition. And again, a very special thank you to Shailen and Robert for their wonderful presentation and time today.